She's the billionaire saving the planet from climate change, one private jet flight at a time. Taylor Swift, the most famous person on the planet right now, selling out stadiums all over the world. Just in Melbourne, just the other week, 250,000 tickets in one town. That's similar numbers to what I sell, and I am doing shows at the moment, warm-up shows for my world tour. Tickets are on sale for regional Australia shows and the rest of the world. I'm coming very soon, so just hold your horses. IsaacButterfield.com forward slash 2024. Now, for some reason, there's a lot of hate towards Swifty, and I think it's unfounded. She is a very, very talented young woman who really, really just bitches about her exes. But she she is quite talented. I do like the Swifty, I'll say that. And it's strange to see a lot of right-wing folk hate her and a lot of left-wing folk pretend she's Jesus. Now that is interesting to say the least. She has done some interesting things in the past. She doesn't like Trump. Travis Kelsey, her boyfriend, got jabbed 45 times. There's a lot of interesting things happening there, but I like Swifty. Let's be honest, Love Story was the song of my generation. I do also enjoy certain conspiracy theories, like the one that she's actually trying to help the Democrats win the next election. I still don't think that that's completely untrue, but we'll see. And that's actually a popular thought. Nearly 20% of Americans think Taylor Swift is a part of a covert government effort to re-elect Joe Biden. Which, let's be honest, isn't the craziest thing the Democrats have done. The number one craziest thing the Democrats have done is having a man with Alzheimer's in the, in the Oval Office. That's probably the worst. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was going to foot him... Uh, foot, foot, but one story caught my eye about Taylor Swift in the last couple of weeks, and that is a story that all has to do with this dude, Travis Kelsey, the dude she's rooting, which is Australian for having intercourse with. Now, Travis and Taylor haven't been going out for too long, so they're either going to get married or he's going to turn into a Grammy at some point. I am very interested to see what happens. But Travis is a different type of man. He is not your traditional Man, he is not a toxic, masculine piece of shit. He's very different to the rest of us, okay? And therefore, Taylor Swift is destroying toxic masculinity because she's showing young women, old women, women all over the world that you don't have to be with a toxic male piece of shit who, who goes to work and provides for a family. You can have Travis Kelsey, this beautiful young man who never would do anything outrageous. And it's led to this, women are now lusting over lovable soft jocks, according to research. Ooh. Now, this story here was brought to you by the filler between your auntie's dinner and her Xanax before bed, The Project. The Project is a left-leaning TV show here in Australia that pretends to give the news. So let's have a look what The Project has to say about Swifty and how she's destroying toxic masculinity. The internet is lusting after soft jocks. Is it? Men with huge muscles and none of that toxic masculinity. Okay. <laughs> Online women's magazine, Bustle, not to be confused with my favourite women's magazine, Busty Broads, <laughs> says a more tender evolution of a jock is slowly surpassing the alpha male, the soft jock. Quick note, any man who calls himself an alpha male is not an alpha male, he's a in fact, he's probably a beta male, and any man that says he's not a beta male is definitely a fucking beta male. Soft jocks have all the masculine qualities without any of the toxic personality traits. They're essentially coconuts. Hard on the outside, and soft on the inside. So they look like they can defend you, but they crumble under pressure. Sounds good. I have a lot of opinions on masculinity. I'm sure you probably do as well, but I think my opinions can be summed up in one sentence. A real man is a man who's happy to go to war all day and then come home, look after his family, cook them dinner and wash up afterwards and be happy with that. That's a real man, all right? That's not an alpha, that's not a beta, that's just a good, solid dude. Doesn't mean you have to do that every day, it just means you should be willing to do it. This idea of being a big softie, meaning that you have to leave your toxic masculinity at the door, is ridiculous because of what is defined as toxic masculinity. Let's remember that some people believe that toxic masculinity is being stoic, 
taking risks, providing for the family. That's all toxic. Competitiveness, that's toxic. So you better cut that out, gents, if you're doing any of that shit, you toxic pieces of fucking turd. And I'll say this, if you ever want to be Travis Kelsey, this heartthrob with big muscles that they keep referring to, and can I just say on the topic of big muscles, this is Travis Kelsey's body. You look like me, you fucking idiot, and you're a fucking professional athlete paid millions of dollars a year. Get in the gym, you fucking twat. All right, let's head over to bustle or bustybroads.com and check out the original article and the research that went into it. Soft jocks take the field. A new crop of athletes are choosing to forego. Alpha mail them instead. Brace sensibilities. Their teammates might once have decried as beta. Fuck yeah, beta boys. One, two, three, beta boys. In the late aughts, toxic masculinity was all the rage. The movie 300 hit the theatres and convinced every young man in America that the coolest thing you could do was kill people and wear a loincloth. No, no it didn't. It convinced them that that was a good fucking movie, you fucking idiot. But that man's time has passed. These days, the highest praise a man can receive is being called a baby girl. Is it? Fuck. Fuck. We are fucked if Russia does anything. We're fucked. When these men redirect attention from their washboard abs to their soft underbellies, they convey they're nothing like the problematic archetypes of yore. They're sensitive, non-threatening, and apparently Princess Diana coded. I don't know what that means, but they sound like the biggest bunch of pussies that have ever lived. Ever fucking lived. Could you imagine storming the beaches on D-Day and these fucking beta males are running the show? Oh, I can't do it. Me hay fever. Me hay fever. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> Lately, the softening has infiltrated the white hot center of toxic masculinity, the locker room. Whether it's Travis Kelsey and his unabashed simping for his girlfriend, Taylor Swift. She's a billionaire, I'd simp for it too. Buy me another island, please, darling. Buy me another island. The article then goes on to talk about uh, all these different players from the Miami Heat and who likes fine art collecting. Uh, Emo King, Jimmy Butler, who spends his free time working on a country music album, playing dominoes and practicing his latte art. Mate, you can do whatever you want, but also, these are players who are paid millions of dollars a year and they're fucking bored and trying to find something to do, all right? Why don't you ask just a dude who drives trucks all day if he's keen on jumping in a bit of latte art, all right? He doesn't have time between snorting meth and fucking driving for 70 hours a week. He doesn't have time for latte art. He just wants a fucking cappuccino with no sugar because he's on a diet. In saying all of this, you can be masculine and do things that are thought to not be masculine. That's fine. I guess my whole point in this video is what is labeled as toxic masculinity is bullshit. There are men who are toxic, but it doesn't mean that masculinity is inherently toxic. There are many women that are toxic fucking people, but that doesn't mean that femininity is toxic either. There's just toxic pieces of shit out there. I do worry about men though. I, I think that we are facing a, an absolute crisis when it comes to masculinity, and I think that can be encompassed in this paragraph here. We've witnessed the rise and fall of similar tropes in the recent past. The wife guy, the golden retriever boyfriend, the himbo, and even the yogurt male. The yogurt male, you slightly sour fucking pussy. If I ever get called a yogurt male, I will jump off a fucking bridge. You don't have to be the most masculine man of all time. Just don't be a sloppy fucking yogurt man. What does that even mean? In closing, ladies and gentlemen, these articles were written by women and I'd just like to say no penis, no opinion, but it's also 2024 and some women have penises, so I appreciate your opinion. Gentlemen out there, there are toxic traits that we all have and you shouldn't. You shouldn't have them. You should work to get rid of them. Ladies, you should also do the same. Uh, and Travis Kelsey, he's fine. Taylor Swift, she's fine. Good on yous, you're all doing great. Well done, so proud. You should just keep working every single day to become the best version of yourself. But apparently working on yourself is also toxic. Thanks, Taylor Swift. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Cheerio, ladies and gentlemen. Be a good motherfucker. Peace in the Middle East. Mid extinct. Toodle au revoir. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching this fantastic video by me. Now, ladies and gentlemen, some very important news. I am going on a world tour in 2024. If you are in the USA, the UK, Australia, or New Zealand, or any other part of the world, make sure you sign up for tickets at isaacbutterfield.com. And as soon as they become available, you will get an email, you'll be able to get them straight away, and you won't miss out. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. Once again, see you next time. Bye.